Hi, my name is Ryan Guy, and today I'm here to talk to you about some of the tools that you can use to enhance the research process. Um, over the many years that I've been part of academia, um, I've been collecting a bunch of different tools that have been useful to my research process, and this lecture is a chance for me to go ahead and share some of those tools with you. So, let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and move on forward. So, a bit of an overview of where we're headed. I'm going to start by talking to you about the Firefox web browser in terms of being a good browser for conducting research. Um, from there, I'll talk about the importance of having a full featured Office suit, and I'll introduce you to OpenOffice. Um, moving on from that, I'm going to spend several minutes talking about reference management software, uh, the program Zotero, um, which is a plugin for the Firefox web browser in particular. After that, I'll talk about doing research paperless, and I'll go over a couple different software tools that are available to help with that. And finally, I'll cover a really nifty tool for file backup known as Dropbox. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna to talk to you today is a research web browser in the form of Mozilla Firefox. Now, I, like many of you, use a variety of different web browsers. However, um, today I'm gonna to try to convince you that when it comes to doing research, it's really handy to have a browser that you use specifically for doing research, and I suggest Mozilla Firefox to fill that category. So, why Mozilla Firefox? First off, friends don't let friends use Internet Explorer. Um, there was a point in time where many us, of us early adopters to the Internet all used Internet Explorer. It's what was out there, it's what we had, and have many fond memories of watching hamster dances and other things on the Internet via Internet Explorer. However, since then, things have gotten better, and um, in that, for that reason, I suggest using a more advanced browser such as Mozilla Firefox. A um, couple other reasons for that. First off, as I'm going to be covering today, there are a variety of different plugins that are available for the Firefox program that can help in the research process. Um, I'll be going over Zotero in depth, and you'll see um, why that is. Um, next thing, it's important to have stability. Now, while I will say that Internet Explorer has gotten a little bit better in recent years um, than it used to be. Um, when it comes to having stability, I would say that Firefox is significantly better on that frontier. Um, there's nothing worse than being buried in the research process, finding a really good source, only to have your browser crash right in the midst of it. So for that reason, I again recommend Firefox. Um, and finally, like many of many of the programs that I'm be, well, I think all the programs that I'm be talking to you about today, uh, Firefox is a free program that you can go ahead and download. So let's talk about how you do that. Uh, getting Firefox on your computer is a really easy process. Um, just go ahead and open whatever web browser you're currently using and navigate to www.firefox.com. When you do, a page that looks like that will come up, and just go ahead and. Um, click on that green button that says Firefox free download and that's going to take you to a site that's specific to your computer and operating system and from there just go ahead and download it follow the prompts it's a really easy setup and you'll be up and running in no time all right moving on the next thing I want to talk about is the importance of having a fully featured office suit and I'm going to introduce you to openoffice.org all right, so why open office? Um, it's really important when you're doing heavy duty research that you have a fully functional office suit. Now, uh, many of your computers may have come bundled with um, a variety of different office type programs. Um, for the most part, those tend to be you know, starter editions or previews. Um, I don't really have anything against the Microsoft Office suit. Um, I used it for years and years. I think it's a fine office suit. If you have a full version of Office, you're probably fine. Um, however, even though I've used Office, I really like OpenOffice. What OpenOffice is, is an open source alternative to Microsoft Office. It's fully featured and has all the functionalities that you would expect from Microsoft Office, but 
it's in a, um, a free package that you can go ahead and get. So if you're one of those people that's using a starter edition or using works or pages or something like that, um, I think you're going to find that's insufficient. Plus, it doesn't allow you to use all the cool tools that I'm going to be talking about next. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out. And you know, if you're kind of a you know, poor college student, you want to save a couple hundred bucks, you can go ahead and download Open, Open Office for free, and it'll give you all the features. So you can see download from the splash screen. Um, it's got a word processor, spreadsheet, presentation, um, you know, like drawing, database, pretty much anything that exists in Microsoft Office, um, there is an Agilist tool available in OpenOffice. So you can go ahead and check that out. So how do you get OpenOffice? The process is pretty simple. Um, just go ahead and navigate to openoffice.org and there'll be a variety of different links in the page. But the one you want looks like this and it says I want to download openoffice.org. Click on that and it again will take you to a page specific to your um, computer type and operating system and you go ahead and download and get it set up. And just follow those prompts. It's a really easy um, installation process and you will be up and running. All right, um, the next thing I want to talk to you about I'm going to go a little more in depth with and that is reference management software specifically in the term um, in the form of the plugin for Firefox known as Zotero. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of background on this. Um, I've been in school for a while and when I was a little freshman just starting off in the research process, um, we'll say that my methods to conducting research were pretty messy. Um, early on what I would do is I'd grab a pad of paper when I was beginning a paper when I was beginning to write a paper and as I did my research I would scratch down notes kind of write them all over the place and I ended up with something that looked a lot like this um, which was an utter mess. When it came time to sit down and actually write the paper or ugh, try to put together the reference page, um, well, let's just say things got creative at points. Um, so this wasn't very effective. As I went on with my education, um, I developed a little bit better process, which was the index card technique. And what this involved was as you did your research process and you came across good sources, you would go ahead and write down their full reference on, a re on an index card and uh, keep track of those and on the back you would go ahead and write all the notes that you had, page numbers, that kind of thing. So when it came time to sit down and actually write your paper, you had those notes right in front of you. When it came time to do the reference page, you could go ahead and just pull those out and type them up uh, from that and you keep track of it. Um, significantly more organized than just scratching things down on a piece of paper. However, a ton of work. And um, as a person that's always been kind of the technology, I was a little unhappy with this low-tech alternative, so I started to look for something better. Um, early on in my education, there were a variety of kind of burgeoning online tools as well as software programs that assisted in the reference management process. Um, for one, the Landmark Center Citation Machine is something I used a lot. It was a website, you go on, you know, enter all of your sources manually one by one and it would go ahead and generate a um, Word document that has your references on it. Um, kind of a pain in the butt, but spit them out correctly, got the citation right, which was something that I was really happy for. Um, over the years, a lot of different programs have kind of come and gone. Um, to this day, EndNote is um, a program a lot like um, Zotero, which I'll be introducing you to next. Um, however, my main problem with EndNote was that it cost money, and I was a broke college student and wanted something for free, so I kept looking. And fortunately for me, I stumbled upon Zotero. So one of the big things that I liked about Zotero was that it was another open source program. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what open source is, open source programs are software that is developed in a collaborative process by a community of programmers that have come together and created um, different snips of code and uh, ultimately are packaged together in free software that is um, downloaded and available. Um, so what Zotero is, is it's actually um, emerged as a plugin for the Firefox browser. Um, I'll talk about this in a second, but there are um, standalone versions in the works then coming out. But basically what it does is it is a iTunes-like program that will keep track of your references for you as you go through the research process and generate works cited pages for you or references pages for you um, when that time comes. However, it does a lot more than that. Um, since it is 
um, a user-friendly iTunes-like user face. You can go ahead and search for your items, um, put them into collections, and keep track of them based on class or paper or other research project. Um, when I first found it, I had been using the research card method or the index card method. So it allows enhancements. You can go ahead and attach notes, um, images, things like that. So it allows for a much richer um, version of those notes that I was writing in the back of the index cards. And you can go ahead and tag references. So if you're, say, you're working on a, process, a project on Facebook, you could add a Facebook tag. And then anytime that you need to look that up, there's a nice little search bar. You can search from that, and it'll bring up everything that you've tagged Facebook. Um, can be really handy when you've done a lot of research and have a really big library. So, some of the reasons why Zotero is option or is awesome. Um, as I mentioned before, early on I was using that um, Sun and Citation machine, which was handy. It cr cranked out those reference pages. However, you had to type everything in, which was a big pain in the butt. Zotero has automatic citation imports. So when you're on popular sites like um, Google Scholar or EBSCOhost or you know a whole variety of other ones, um, it's just a simple click, boom, and the citation, and in many cases, the full text PDF, are downloaded directly into your library and kept track of. Um, you go ahead, you can set up sync with it. It'll sync across multiple computers. Uh, you can take notes. Um, and like I said, it is organized a lot like an iTunes playlist, which makes it really user friendly and easy to start using, even if you're not super tech savvy. So some of the helpful features that are available inside Zotero, um, first off is the citation export. Now you may find yourself um, spread across different disciplines that require different format guides. Um, for one, in the departments that I work in, we require APA formatting, but if you're working on an English paper, you may have professors that require MLA. Um, Zotero will spit out whatever format you tell it to, and it's literally got 20 or 30 different formats. So if there's something that you're using, it's in there, and it can crank those out um, directly for you in a really easy way. Um, uh, like I said before, there are standalone versions in the works. However, I like the version that runs directly in Firefox. It's handy and less buggy, and it's tried and tested and been around for a long time. Um, you can save notes in multiple languages. So if um, you know, you're a non-native English speaker and you want to do your research process in your native language, you can go ahead and do that. Switch the language tool becomes super handy. Um, and like I said, when you're doing that automatic citation import, it will go ahead and grab full text PDFs, files. Um, it'll archive websites. One of the problems that came up a lot in my research, my thesis, is that I was looking at a lot of different websites. And I'd visit a website one day and be like, wow, this is really great only to come back the next day to find that it had been taken down or moved. Uh, Zotero will go ahead and create snapshots of those sites, archive them, and that way, anytime that I needed to go back and look at it, I could. And that made my life a lot easier. All right, the next big thing that is super helpful about Zotero is the integration plugins that it has um, with your full feature word, word processing program, uh, specifically that of either Microsoft Office or OpenOffice. What Zotero can do is um, there's a plugin you can download that'll connect Zotero to, to your word processor. So when it comes time to write a paper and you're doing those pesky parenthetical citations, um, there's a button that will show up on your screen. You click that button, boom, brings up your Zotero library, you insert the citation, it'll show up on there formatted correctly, and when it comes time to create the reference page, you click another button, it'll read through your paper, see what you've cited, and generate your references page for you. And so you don't have to worry like, did I cite that? Did I not cite that? Anything that you cited will be read in and spit out in the format that you specify. So super handy. And when you've done large projects like I have, where you've got you know hundreds of sources, um, it can save you hours and hours of time and frustration. So how do you use Zotero? As I mentioned, there is a um, Zotero 3.0 is going to have a standalone version that will work with multiple browsers, um, specifically that of Chrome and Safari. I believe someone's even hacked it to work with Internet Explorer. I do not recommend that. Remember, friends don't let friends use Internet Explorer. But what I'm going to be talking about today is the Firefox plugin. I think that that is the tested and true method, and it works really well. So that's what I'm going to recommend for you guys um, in the meantime. So. Setup process is pretty simple. Um, just go ahead and uh, I'll walk you through it right here. So first thing that you want to do is 
hop on your browser and navigate to www.zotero.org. Um, go ahead and bring that site up. And we'll just go ahead and follow along with the video. Once you're on the Zotero website, the big red button bring you to the screen. And there's a few different versions out there. Like I said, if you're using Firefox, just go ahead and click on that. It'll download the plugin for you. Um, then at that point, the screen will pop up. Click Install Now. And then go ahead and restart the Firefox browser. Um, it can take a little bit of time for it to come up, depending on how fast your computer is. I find anywhere from 5 to 30 seconds seems to be about how long it takes for it to come up. Um, once it's finished, it'll bring it back up and it'll let you know that Zotero is now successfully installed. The next thing that you want to do is go ahead and install those connectors for your Office Suite. So, if you go back to the uh, Zotero homepage, download page, um, where you click that red button to get to, Scroll down and there's a link for word processor plugins. Go ahead and click on that link and it'll take you to a page. Um, this page has got all of the plugins um, for uh, the different types of word processors out there. Just go ahead and select the latest one. Um, if you have Microsoft Word, there's a link up there for that. Um, this demo shows how to do it for OpenOffice, but the process is basically the same. So select the plugin that matches your platform and uh, your word processor. So here, again, brings up a plugin, click Allow, it'll download the plugin. Once that's done, it'll bring up the screen, just go ahead and install the plugin, and then it'll prompt you to restart your browser. Same process before, give Firefox um, a couple seconds to restart, and um, then just follow these prompts, and that'll get you set up and um, connected with your um, word processor. All right, um, so that's a pretty simple process at this point. Um, you'll be able to uh, go ahead and uh, access Zotero, and I'm gonna walk you through that process next. The main way that you know that Zotero has been installed is that the Zotero logo will then show up in the bottom right-hand corner. All right, so after you've installed, you can see that little Zotero logo will show up here in the bottom of your web browser screen. Click on it, and it'll bring up your library. Right now, this library is empty, um, but I'll go ahead and uh, show you around it a little bit more once we put some things into it. So adding citations to Zotero is a pretty easy process. When you find yourself doing research, most of the sites that you go to will have um, an export option that will allow um, reference material to be able to import it directly into a program like Zotero. Um, the thing to watch for is up in your address bar, you'll see little icons like this, whether um, you're on a library catalog um, or even like Amazon.com, you'll see the little book thing, click those. Um, documents when you're on EBSCOhost or even newspaper articles if you're searching um, something like ProQuest or if you're on LATimes.com. Um, if you go ahead and click those, uh, Zotero will automatically import the reference and in many cases the full text PDF into your Zotero library. So I've gone ahead and imported a few in here and you can see how it looks like. Um, like I mentioned, it's very iTunes-like where you've got um, over here your main library. You can add sub-collections, organize references in those. Um, over here in the middle, you'll see where all of your sources start to build up. Um, you can click on those and then over here on the side the details show up and you can go ahead and edit those details, make sure that things appear as you want. Um, occasionally, especially when accessing really old articles, you may find that some goofy things happen like the citation imports in all caps. Um, you can just right click on it and um, it'll give you a transform text option and you can change those lowercase or go ahead and just manually fix things them, um, themselves. Or if you know you find like a DOI or something that you wanted to add later, um, you can edit there. Anything that you edit in your Zotero library will automatically be propagated to any documents that you've um, created in Word and uh, will keep things up to date. So you just change the stuff in Zotero and then it'll spread out to all of your other documents. That way um, you have the most up-to-date versions. This is really handy when you find yourself using sources um, from course to course and paper to paper um, because if you find more things about those sources, you can update them. But for the most part, when they import in, they're pretty much good to go and ready to cite.
All right. So, um, sources that you can add to Zotero. There are a wide variety of sources that you can add um, to Zotero. I'm not gonna go over them all, but pretty much if it exists out there on the web, you can go ahead and uh, click on them or put them in through a variety of different means and uh, have access to them. So blog posts, books, um, theses, conference papers, you know, encyclopedia articles, laws, interviews, etc. Um, wide, wide variety of things. If you can think about it, if you can find it, and there's a way to cite it, Zotero will go ahead and help facilitate that. All right, so moving on. So there are several different ways that you can use Zotero to create a reference page. Um, first off, you can go ahead and drag and drop sources. So if you've got Zotero open, you just click on the source, drag it on over, drop it on um, any text box, and it'll go ahead and spit it out. Uh, you can also right click on the source and, or you know, Pull down the shift or control button, select a bunch of sources, right click, and there's an option to create bibliography from selected items. It'll pop up a window that looks like this. You select your style guide and you can either copy it to the clipboard or have it spit it out as an RTF or HTML file that you can open and uh, put into your word processor. And then the best way to do that is to go ahead and use the built-in word processing plugin that we installed, um, that connector back to your word processor. And I'll talk to you a little bit about how that works now. So oh, just briefly, got a quick video here to show you how you can manually create a reference page. So we'll just go ahead and uh, watch this real quick. So as I mentioned, that process is pretty simple. If you don't want to use the connectors, um, you just go ahead and select the sources that you want to use. And um, like I said, if you hold down the shift or the control button, you can select multiple sources at the same time. Um, so see here, I'm selecting a few different ones. I'm going to go ahead and right click and select the create bibliography from selected items and there it is APA I'll go ahead and save as an RTF file just go ahead and uh, rename that and save it all right doing some research on Facebook here so Facebook bibliography um, then at that point I'll go ahead and click over to that and open that up in my word processor and boom there's the correctly formatted um, APA works cited page that I would want to put in a paper on this Facebook research. So that's really all there is to that. All right, so obviously you can do it that way, but as I mentioned, the best way to go about it is to use those connectors. Um, I've been using this for years now, and I honestly couldn't imagine going back and doing it the old fashioned way. So once you download that plugin, if you use an open office, it'll show right up in your toolbar. If you're using the new version of Microsoft Office, there'll be a separate little tab called add-ons. Click that and you'll see a toolbar that looks just like that in there. Um, the toolbar allows you to do a variety of different things. Um, most commonly, this button here on the far left is the insert citation button. Click on that, you ins um, it'll bring up your library, and you can go ahead and insert any source, parenthetically, into your, uh, into your paper, and boom, that'll pop up. Um, if you need to go back, change, you realize, oh, you know what, two authors talked about this, and you need to add multiple sources. Click on that source you've already added, click the edit button, it'll bring it back up, and you can modify it. Um, when it comes time to create your references page, click on this one on a separate page, boom, it'll read through the document and uh, go ahead and create your references page for you. I need to go back and edit some of the options about that. Here's an edit for that. Uh, if you've made some changes in Zotero, you know, fixed capitalization issue, or maybe added a digital object identifier, just click this refresh button and it'll go through your document and make sure things are uh, up to par. A little demo of how parenthetical citations work and we'll go ahead and watch that now. All right. So I've got a uh, sample paper that I created here just full of junk text. I'm just gonna take you through the process of adding sources. Um, obviously this is probably something you would do as you go, not once your paper is done. But anyways, I've clicked at the end of a sentence and I wanna go ahead and insert a citation. So I click that insert citation button. Um, now at this point, got my library open, select the correct source. And boom, went ahead and added it in. And I'll go ahead and add a few more. So um, down here, I'm just gonna show, like say I was citing something or direct quoting. Go ahead and click on that again. And insert citation, click on my source. Um, since I'm direct citing, I'm gonna go ahead and put a page number in here. 
um, where I got that quotation from theoretically in that text. Click OK. And that time it did it as if I uh, direct cited, showed the page number, which is me doing APA. Um, this time we'll say that uh, Noah Morris is a. Uh, I'm going off. Um, go ahead and suppress that author. And boom, that's just as if uh, Noah Morris was a uh, actual author. So you can see you can do that option as well. Right. Um, so here is the process of adding multiple sources in. You can see that I'm choosing a few different sources. Go ahead and add those. And you can see all those showed up as if I was adding from multiple authors. And all right. So now once I've done that, I'm going to scroll down to my blank references page. And I'm going to head and click the insert bibliography button, third one over. And boom, it read through my paper, saw everything that I cited, and went ahead and created an APA formatted, uh, formatted uh, references page so it's good to go. As um, you can see this process is super easy. Um, if I do decide that I you know, made a mistake, I cited something, I forgot to cite something, um, I can go ahead and go back, click that edit button, it'll bring up that screen and I can you know, edit the way that it looks, um, make changes to it, or even change the citation if that is something that I decide that I need to do. And um, then at that point, so here we'll automatically um, update it. If I click the refresh button and I go back down, I can see the changes that I made have um, already been put into play. All right, so that's Zotero in a nutshell. Uh, like I mentioned, it's a great program. I recommend um, you check it out. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is doing the research process paperless. Now, I have definitely paid my dues. Um, I have scares me to think about how many trees and reams of paper um, I've used over the tenure of being a college student. Um, but something that I switched to a couple of years ago was doing my research process paperless, which means that I no longer print out any of the journal articles or sources that I come across. I have them all online um, for the most part. Even the books that I use I tend to scan in and uh, read and annotate them online. Um, the key thing to doing this successfully is having a good PDF annotation program. Um, I've played around with the different ones that come with uh, either Macs or PCs, uh, primarily Preview or even the Adobe Reader. And while they have some of the options, um, I find that they fall short on some of the tools that I find that I need when doing paperless research. So I'm just going to go over a couple different programs, um, one for PC and one for Mac that I find are really f well featured and free that you can use to do paperless research. So um, just to kind of review why PDF annotation software. Um, paperless research I think is uh, kind of a smart choice particularly as you start doing more in-depth research. One of the things that kind of has fallen upon the next generation of students and scholars is expectations are raised. When it was more difficult to access sources and access research, I think that expectations were lower. However, that is no longer the case. Um, with the dawn of the internet and you know e-libraries and connected libraries, um, it is now possible to get a huge um, variety of sources and to get them pretty easily. As a result, uh, the amount of sources that you're going to see professors require in papers is going to continue to go up and those expectations are going to continue to go up. And with that, um, it becomes more of a burden to try to print out and, and access everything um, in a paper format. Um, and I imagine that uh, for some of you guys trying to constantly pay for copying or buying ink for your printers um, is a ridiculous process. So paperless research is a way to uh, knock all that out. So the reason you need a good PDF annotation software is to kind of overcome some of the limits and have a full set of annotation tools. Um, so I'm going to show you here the one that I use on my PC, which is um, the PDF Exchange program. I've got a quick view of how annotations work. So when I'm doing research, I pull up my journals and I open them in the PDF Exchange Viewer program, which is a free program that you can download. And as I'm doing my research, there's typewriter tools, and so I'll go ahead, just like I would if it was a paper research, and I'll type my notes in the margins, um, you know, 
jotting ideas down, notes to myself, things to pull up later. Uh, the typewriter tool is really handy for that because you can just go ahead and mark them up um, as you go. Um, there are a variety of other tools that are available. Um, you can highlight things just like you would do if you had a highlighter. Um, you can underline, cross things out, um, change colors. For me, when I was doing my research, um, things that you know were interesting that highlight in yellow. If it was a source that I wanted to look up, I usually highlight in blue. Um, sometimes I would color code different uh, research focuses um, based on the highlight color, and that would help me out. You know, create a system that works for you and go with it. Um, as I mentioned before, you can go ahead and uh, use that typewriter tool to just jot down the margins. Um, PDF Exchange, as well as the uh, other program for Mac that I'm going to talk about, um, has sticky note functions. So you can just go ahead and stick sticky notes over on the side, take longer notes with those, and include formatting, which can make life uh, a little bit easier if you want to copy and paste things onto a paper later on. And I mean, there's a ton of different things that you can do. You can you know, draw on these, you can um, create lines. If you directly double click on a highlight, you can add notes to the highlight telling yourself why you highlighted. Um, I definitely come back to papers years later and looked at source and I'm like, I have no clue why I highlighted this or why I thought it was important. So adding a note to that can be a useful way. So as I mentioned, draw lines, connect things, mark them up. And uh, the great thing is unlike if you printed it out, um, you can delete these later on or uh, you know, start with a fresh copy. So that is annotations on PDF in a nutshell. So let's talk about a couple of the different options. So uh, PDF Exchange, which I just demoed, um, there is a paid version and I actually eventually shelled out the I think 20 bucks that it was for the paid version just because it had some cool export features and cropping features that I needed for um, you know, editing and things that I was doing, but the free version is what I have on my netbook. It works great, and uh, I used that for a long time. So to get that, um, there wasn't a quick and easy short version. Um, it's hosted on the cnetdownloads.com site, so you can either go to this URL, tiny.cc forward slash 5vc0k, or just go to downloads.com and search for PDF Exchange Viewer and uh, it'll bring it up and then just go ahead and uh, click download now super easy installation and it'll be up and ready to go if you're a mac user unfortunately pdf exchange does not work on a mac but i have found a program um, that i use on my mac that works just as well on the mac platform and it's a program called skim um, skim is another one of those open source programs that i've been talking about today so to get skim just go ahead and navigate to skim dash app dot sourceforge dot net and that'll bring up a screen that's got some information on it over on the side just look where it says current version um, constantly changing but go ahead and click on that current version download follow the prompts set it up great program I'm pretty sure all you have to do is uh, download it mount the disk um, image and then drag and drop it to your applications boom installed and you'll be ready to go and all those same annotation features that i just showed you in pdf exchange um, it's got the same tools in skim and it'll allow you to conduct that paperless research process all right so the last thing that i want to talk to you about today is file backup software um, there is nothing worse than working on a long research process and even being diligent trying to save stuff ultimately to uh, have a laptop crash, get stolen, something along those lines and lose work. Um, I think when you're really invested in a project, even like losing you know, an hour of changes just seems utterly devastating. Um, so one of the great ways to get around that is to have a good file backup tool. Now, I don't care who you are or how diligently you email things to yourself or backup on, on flash drives. Um, sooner or later you're going to forget to do it and you're going to have data loss. Um, today I'll talk to you a little bit about Dropbox. Dropbox is an automatic plugin that you can go ahead and download and install on your computer, PC, Mac, Mac or whatever, and it will automatically back up anything that you put into it. So how Dropbox works is it creates a folder on your computer, usually my Dropbox inside your documents folder, and anything that is put into that folder is automatically um, uploaded to a secure server where all of your files are kept. And you can install it on multiple computers and it'll sync across those computers. There's apps for your iPhone, your Android phone, I believe they even have Black, um, Blackberry app now. And you can access your files anywhere and everywhere. Um, as you're working on stuff and you save a file, um, if you realize that 
you know, you made a mistake, you didn't mean to save it. Um, it allows revisions, so you can go back in time and download copies of earlier files. Um, you can share folders. When I was a grad student, we created a uh, grad student shared folder where we all dot, um, drop journal articles and things that we were working on. We were able to share those files inside the share folders inside our drop boxes with each other. And uh, it was really handy. And once again, like everything that I've shown you today, um, Dropbox is a free program that you can go ahead and download and put on your computer. Um, there is pay options, but for free, you get two gigabytes. And if you invite your friends, you get an extra half a gigabyte for every friend that you invite. So um, definitely get it, invite some friends. I think mine's like 10 gigabytes and still free. So check that out. To get Dropbox, super easy process. Just go ahead and navigate to dropbox.com. Um, on the site, you'll see the big blue button that says download Dropbox. Click that button, follow the, uh, the guide, and it'll go ahead and download it onto your computer. Um, it's got a nice, easy setup process where you choose where you want to keep a Dropbox folder. I find all the defaults work. Then there's a nice, easy, handy tour that will show you all the features and functionalities of that. You can go ahead and check that out, and uh, I think you'll be pretty happy with that. Well, I want to thank you guys today for your time. I, as I said at the beginning of this, I've been doing this for a long time, and there are a lot of different tools out there. These are some of the best ones that I've found that have been significantly helpful to me in my work as a scholar. So go ahead and uh, check them out, and I wish you good researching.